Hey guys, so I am on my way to my doctor's appointment and um sorry. So I'm on my way to my doctor's appointment and it's kind of nervous. I don't like it's nerve wracking a little bit. I don't know why though, because this is not my first doctor's appointment, so um this shouldn't even be a surprise for me. So uh uh. I don't know. I think it's just the whole topic being uncomfortable, trying to be comfortable. So I was like, okay, well, let me talk to my friends on my way to this appointment. And so that's what I'm doing. So pretty much for those of you that don't know or may be new to this vlog, um, I'm 29. I'll be 30 next month. And I have PCOS. And for me, my PCOS, it causes me to have difficulties with conceiving. And right now, my husband and I are trying to conceive another child. So, I call it my little booth. I have to go to my doctor's appointment and um, hopefully it's not an issue with her prescribing me uh, a fertility pill, which, you know, helps you ovulate for women that don't, which I'm one of them. Not on my own, anyway. Um, so that, you know, we can start actively. I say actively, but she says we're already actively trying. But trying to conceive. So, I say all that to say it kind of want to give you guys, like, a thought process in my mind. So, as I'm here and I'm thinking about all the things that I'm about to go through with my body, um... I know the last time it was just Keith and I, so I could really be emotional with him, share a lot of frustration with him because it was just us. But now that we have Prince KJ, I just really hope that I'm not moody like I was the first time um, and that doesn't reflect on KJ. So that's, that, that's like the first half. And then the second half, when you're trying to conceive, it's frustrating and it's hard and it's not as exciting. The end outcome is, but the actual trial is not as exciting, at least for me, let me speak for me, because I have to try hard. So, um, yeah, it just, it just kind of almost takes the fun out of it. Out of it. And it carries, um, I want to say weight, <laughs> because you're always anxious and wondering if, if it worked or if it's not going to work or, you know, I use clear blue, so am I going to see a flashy thing today? Am I not going to see a flashy thing today? And I just say thing and it's really a smiley face and I'll share all of that with you guys in my journey. But, you know, it's just so much that comes with it so yeah i'm mentally talking to myself <laughs> boosting myself because the last time i had friends that were actively trying to conceive and now i'm on this journey not by myself but really by myself because keith is supportive however he doesn't understand everything that i'm going through i have to go through so I mean, I'm sure I could still call the other ladies, but still, I'm going through this mentally by myself. So, that's kind of how I look at it. Um, yeah, I, I took a moment today when I was getting ready just to reflect on everything that, you know, I've been through early on. And I felt like I should kind of come back and do a more updated video because I don't want it when I originally told my story of how I got pregnant with PCOS it took me two months on the medication to conceive KJ um but with that Keith and I had already been together four years so once our relation turned serious we had no contraceptives at all so imagine that amount of time where you're having fun and nothing's happening i'm in my early 20s 
nothing is happening. I don't have no oops, nothing, no oops, baby, no nothing in it. It was hard for me at that time, so much to the point where Keith and I were having a conversation, and I was like, yo, you want to have kids. Why don't you just go out there, have you some babies, and uh, then come back and check for me in a nice way that I can say it. But, um, and that was the hurt part of me, not knowing the situation of my condition. And I say that to say, I was just told that it would be um, a complicated process, it would be a challenge, and you know, I may need a little help. When you're going through that, those words sound like no. They sound like possible turns into impossible. Challenge turned into a definite no. And a little help means automatically um, thousands of dollars totaling up in your head of what your process might be. So everybody's journey is different. At this point, I'm just at that point, not this, but that point. I'm just automatically thinking the worst. And, you know, you have days where you feel like you're alone on this ship. And the one thing God created you to do as a woman is to reproduce. And you can't do that. Not by yourself, anyway. But, you know, my mind frame at the time was, I can't do that. And I don't want to have somebody in a situation where they want to have children and because of me they can't and I never want my partner to resent me so fast forwarding to you know along and along as the relationship went and we had that discussion because I was always very open with Keith about my situation and he expressed to me that he was loving he was in love with me and if we didn't have kids, fine. If we did, that was fine, too. But it wasn't a deal breaker for him. So as I'm getting dressed today, I reflect back to a very intense moment where I was mentally down on my last leg to where we were in Red Lobster. And this woman walked past me, and she was pregnant, and she also had a child with her. And it, it really broke me down. It was nothing happened. You know, she didn't say anything. Keith and I were just randomly having dinner. And it holding all of the emotions in made me click. And I just had to have a cry out moment. So and, and at that time, I mean, it, it was just really thinking, God, like, I'll, I'll never be a mother. I'll never know what it feels to carry a child. Like, I'll never know any of this or have any of this. And these are all the things that I want. Why me? Like, that's the only thing I can think about. Like, why me? Why did God choose me to have this complicated journey to becoming a mother like or will I ever be a mother not even a journey because at that point I didn't think a journey for me exists it was just why me so I say all that to say I really not that I really really hope but I know it's probably other women out there who had the same mindset that I did where you feel like you're out on a ship and I call it a ship an island wherever you are that you're by yourself but you're not it's more women that are like you like me and it's okay if you need help um i believe in god and i know that all things are possible through him even when the medication it wouldn't happen if it wasn't meant to happen however sometimes you do need a little boost, a little help and i call it a boost because that's that's a comforting word for me then i just need a little help to get to where I need to be but I want to encourage somebody like if you're going through the process it's a process don't get discouraged um, if it doesn't happen for you right then 
it, it's hard to it's easier said than done to say don't worry about it but just don't mentally give up i've spoken to so many people where it may have taken them seven years and they took a break or um the longest i've heard of somebody was like 15 years i think she said and after trying and trying and trying different things it just finally happened on its own and it's hard because you want it right then right like you want it now like give it to me now and it just it, it doesn't happen so I get it I understand and you know it's I want to say okay it's, it's going to be okay and I saw you know someone on Facebook say stop saying it's going to be okay when it's not and that person was like me and they had a baby and it's like but it, it ended up being okay for you sis it wasn't okay at that moment, and I know that's not what you want to hear, but somebody's trying to support you and give you encouraging words. So, I don't know. I'm probably going to edit all of this out if you know how I feel when I hear it back. I just want somebody to hear my story, and if it helps one person, then great. If talking to somebody helps you, awesome. You know, whatever you got to do to stay sane, so to speak. But don't give up. Always keep hope and have faith that it's going to happen for you. So that's all I wanted to say before I go to this appointment. Um, once I finish with my appointment, guys, I will check back in and tell you how it went. Um, and then, yeah. So I'll be back. So y'all, yeah, I'm going to start making all my appointments for later on in the afternoon. So I went in and I was in and out. I technically got here probably at around 3.55 and I'm out by 4.20. So um, pretty much the doctor came in. Um, she wrote down four steps that I need to do, which is one, I need Prevera for 10 days. Two, I start my Clomid on day three of bleeding. And then three, start the metformin daily. She advised that I start my metformin now um, just to see if my body will ovulate by itself. And then four, um, after 10 to 14 days at the Clomid, um, I do need to call and get an appointment to do a ultrasound to see if I'm even ovulating at this point. Um, really she kind of left it up to me that it's optional for me to do the ultrasound since i had success with clomid before but if i was starting out that's something that she would recommend however my first time the doctor she didn't require me to come in to do um any type of ultrasound so i felt like i was kind of on a boat by myself so i do think i may just do it once for the experience and see what my body is actively doing however i'm still going to do the clear blue and all that other jazz too so i'm feeling really good about the appointment she's gonna call my prescription in and i'll go by cvs and pick it up today and then i'll kind of show you guys what um she has me on as far as the dosage that i'll be taking and yeah we'll talk a little bit more at that time um I'm going to say this at the end, but I'll say it on here too. If you guys have any, any questions about my process, <clears throat> please let me know. Again, this is my experience and I want to share it with you guys because I did not share it with y'all. I shouldn't say y'all, but I didn't share my experience with KJ before, but I received tons and tons and tons of questions and I was so sad that I did not share my experience um, just in case I'm able to help anybody out with my process. And again, I say it a thousand times, you're not alone. So, yeah, I'm going to share that with you. Let me know if y'all have any questions, and I'll be back. Hi, guys. I'm checking back in with you like I said I would. I was able to pick up all three of my prescriptions today. Um, in total, with my insurance, the medicine came out to about 14 bucks, and it was for all three. Um, the most expensive thing was the clomiphene. It came out to $12, and the other two, which is the metformin 
and the uh purveyor or a former purveyor it was only like a dollar and 50 cents and 95 cents for the other one so of course i'll have to not of course um but i'll start off with the so i'll start out taking the purveyor and this is 10 milligrams i'll take one tablet by mouth for the first 10 days okay and so after that i'll start taking my clomid on the third day of bleeding and that's 50 milligrams of um or the clomid that i have and i take one tablet by mouth for five days and i begin this on the third day of my menstrual cycle so that's that one so after i start doing that um technically she wants me to start taking the metformin now this is 500 milligrams and i take one tablet twice a day the last time that i was taking this um it worked a lot better when i took it with food however it still sucked um <laughs> it was horrible i'm not looking forward to taking that again but you do what you gotta do um what did i yeah I, I guess I'll go back to the metform, metformin for a second. The last time I was on metformin, um, it gave me diarrhea, my stomach hurt, my head hurt. I felt nauseated all the time. It really felt like morning sickness, and it was so freaking annoying being on metformin. So, yeah, that was that. And um, hopefully I don't have the same symptoms. However, I'm going to walk in anticipating that I do, and I'll just already be prepared to feel like I suck. Kiefer, you going to feel sorry for me? Yes, of course. All right, and so we were talking about the metformin, so I'll take that twice a day, and I'll take that twice a day. And I pretty much take that the entire time. I never stop taking the metformin. So it's not like after I finish the Clomid, I stop with the metformin. The last time I didn't stop taking the metformin until after I found out I was pregnant. So that's the route that I'll do this time as well. And so um, this is on 10 to 14 days after the Clomid. So... Um, for me, I'm starting my process on the 1st of January. So that way, my doctor's not on vacation. She'll be um, back in full swing. So whenever I go in for an ultrasound, I'll be able to meet and talk to her instead of talking to someone else. So, um, so I start taking the Prevera. For the first 10 days. For me, generally, my period starts on in between the third the third day after I've taken it or the fourth. So, that puts me around the 13th or the 14th of the month. Y'all yeah, might have to figure out this math. Because Keith and I are going on vacation on the 16th. And I don't want to be on my cycle at that time. So, I got to... Let me figure out this mathematics on when I actively need to start taking that prepare. So I'll make another video on what date I ultimately decide and then I can go into details and create my tracking. And then I already have my friend and that's going to make this calendar for me so I can show you guys that because I don't know anything about the calendar. Um, and then I'll also show you how I set up my clear blue because this will be my first time using the digital one where it connects to my phone. So um, I'm probably going to do that within the next week or so, just so I can go ahead and get on track myself. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know. And I'll be more than happy to either elaborate more on something that you have a question on or just chat. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if the love is real, y'all know how I feel. Please leave a comment below. 
And thank you guys so much for watching. And we always appreciate your prayers and any type of encouraging words you can give us on our journey to baby number two. So we'll see y'all later. I gotta go get my child. So see y'all later.